time. All of you are crazy until we, we say otherwise, right? There are plenty of countries in the world today where if you pray five times a day, you're an extremist. Plenty of countries where you're, you get questioned. Do, you, do, you, do your parents pray at home? They pray. There are people, in, there are countries in the world where if you dress a certain way, you'll be followed around. It's a reality. You're gonna be, there are countries in the world where you can't get certain jobs. There's no way you'll get into certain institutions, certain places because of your Islam, because you're wearing your Islam outright. You need to hide it. You need to be scared of it. You need to let it go. And that this, this idea of, you know, you know, insulting someone in the name of free speech, the hypocrisy of it is so loud. It's so incredibly loud. Today, there's a political movement against racism. So if someone even in these countries were to say something racist, outright racist, there would be a public outcry. No, you can't say that. No, you can't teach that in schools. You lose your job. Why? Because it's against the sensitivity of a certain group of people. You have them feeling inferior. And that's absolutely correct. But now, for, for Muslims, fair game, right? You can offend them all you want because they're, they're probably extremists anyway. They need to learn to get with, get with the program with the rest of us. This is the position we get, keep getting put into. But what is our response supposed to be besides beyond anger, beyond protest? How many, how, how many hours are you going to stand outside with a picket sign? What is our, we're one-fifth of the world's population. We have the most powerful document in existence in our possession, and we recite it rigorously with, for, with our hearts and souls. And we can't come up with a better solution? We can't come up with something smarter? And well, what do we do? We put the expectation on Muslim governments, right? Muslim countries should boycott all trade with these countries until they apologize for what they did. We should, you know, cut off our, our uh, you know, trade routes and airspace from them. And we should, you know, put sanctions among them. Good luck with that. You, you can ask that all you want. That's not how the real world works. And let's grow up and realize that. Instead of saying what the Muslim government should do and should do and should do, let's just kind of look at reality for what it is. So well, what are we supposed to do then? What in the world are we supposed to do? You know what we should do? We should do the thing that pleases Allah the most and the thing that kuffar who hate Islam hate the most. The thing that Allah loves the most the one that the thing that the kuffar hate the most. There's a phrase about that in Surah Al Fatih. Allah describes the Prophet ﷺ as a farmer. He says, Yu'jibu zurra'a li yaghidha bihim al kuffar. The farmer is impressed with the crop, and as the crop cultivates and grows, it angers the kuffar. It angers the disbelievers. Why is this crop growing and maturing? Why is it maturing? What is the maturity of the crop that the Prophet ﷺ raised. Study that ayah carefully and you'll find it's how he cultivated his companions. The Qur'an was flowing through their veins. They understood what this worldview is and they stood with it with confidence. This is the time for you and me to show how much Islam is an inseparable part of our identity and an inseparable part of our identity for generations to come. If you're somebody who was barely praying, you should say, you know what? Because you hate my Islam so much, now I'm gonna pray five times. You were thinking about hijab, you're not sure about, you know what? Because you hate Islam so much, and because you want me to let it go, now I'm gonna wear it even more. Now I'll put it on. I was thinking about my beard. Nope, now it's coming. Because I will offend you with what makes Allah happy. What I think, what brings me closer to my Prophet. I will offend you with it. You like offending him? Oh, I love offending you when you hate him. I'll offend you by deepening my roots in this book. I'll offend you by completely transforming how I think about educating myself. How I think about educating my children. I will change... I will, at least in my family, I'll change the trajectory of what, what, what kind of Muslims we look like in 10 years, how educated we are, 